Hello there, I am Zolirla, and this is The Joy of Computer Gaming, where we investigate good and intriguing examples of computer gaming history. Today I am highlighting honorable mentions for the year of 1982. These are interesting games that I felt did not warrant an entire episode, but still have some things worth pointing out. This is Aztec Challenge, an endless runner game created by Robert T. Bonifacto. This is the very first endless runner game on the computer that I'm aware of. It's very simple with simple graphics, but the difficulty ramps up in the later levels. You can only do a low jump, medium jump, or a high jump. Obstacles start out being only the terrain, but then multiple tiers show up, spikes, little rockets, and then you die. I really didn't enjoy this game. This is Warrior of Ross Dungeon, a dungeon crawler role-playing game created by Randall Don Masteler. It has randomly created dungeons and a very archaic control scheme. You can save your character and game and reload them even if you die, so it's technically not a roguelike, though it certainly aims to be like Rogue or even Apshi. You'll play and die a few times before you figure out the controls. The game is almost all battles, which just devolved into me aiming for the head then trying to hit the head over and over. It usually killed enemies in one hit on the starting levels. At the same time, I was just hoping I didn't get one shot by a lucky blow from the enemy. At least sometimes, the monsters don't want to fight, so you can avoid fighting those ones. It has descriptions of some of the rooms and some mood text on occasion, which is a nice simple touch. The game also has quick time events where you have to press a key fast enough to avoid getting hit by a trap. After figuring out the controls and that there is an option to speed up the game, I had enough fun playing for a while. This is Choplifter, a search and rescue action game created by Dan Gorlin. This game simulates parallaxing and is fairly smooth scrolling when there aren't bullets or explosions to keep track of. You just rescue people and deal with annoying tanks blowing up. There have been numerous games that have copied this basic premise, such as the oddly popular Oids from 1987 on the Atari ST. This is totally not my kind of game as it just infuriates me. This is Clowns and Balloons, a brick-breaking game created by Frank Cohen. It stood out for me because it has full music, smooth moving characters, and feels like a more complete game than just about anything else from the same time period. The fact that you're just bouncing around on some trampolines to pop balloons unfortunately translates into a very dull game as there's no further variety to it that I've seen. This is Frogger, a don't get hit by the moving things game created by Konami. This was one of the most popular video games of the early 80s, but I certainly don't know why. Maybe because it has a lot of catchy music, maybe because it has so many ways to die and it was notoriously difficult. In any case, I don't care for this one. Never played it much and never understood the hype over it. This is Getaway, a cops and robbers action game created by Mark Reed. I almost wanted to do a full episode on this game because it's a surprisingly well-made simple little game. You have a mission at the upper right corner for a goal, but you can grab things around the world anyways. You have a hideout to stash money, have to worry about gas, and there are three police vehicles that go from ignoring you to chasing you down if you ever steal the white van. There are nice little touches in the game, such as showing a rectangle where other vehicles are when they're nearby but off screen. The police vehicles have three distinct sounds, and how their sirens get louder the closer the police are to you. This is Dig Dug, a digger game created by Namco. This is another one of those games that were really popular and I don't understand why. You just dig down, kill critters, and repeat. Sure, they can turn into ghosts and fly through the terrain at you or escape. There are rocks you could drop on them, and one of them breathes fire, but that's about all there is to it. Oh, and apparently you are pumping the enemies with air to make them explode. As a kid, I always thought you were some weird digging creature that killed things with its tongue to digest them and somehow they recovered if you weren't fast enough. Not like either version makes much sense at all, really. 